Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are excited today to uh, speak with Jade from Putt Check. I'm going to give it just one more minute to give folks a chance to join in, and then we will get, get going. Maybe as you're um, as we're waiting to start here, if you want to post into the chat uh, where you're joining from, uh, your name and your location, that would be awesome. See who we've got. All right, I think it's a minute after, let's get started. So, hey everyone, I'm Toby Anderson. I'm the head of customer experience at SpeakUp. And I am really uh, privileged, honestly, to partner with our customers to, you know, help them find ways to get success out of their employee comms app and uh, work with people that are amazing like, uh, like Jade. Jade, do you wanna do a quick uh, intro? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm Jade Casey. I'm the head of people um, for Putt Shack in the UK. Thanks for joining us, Jade. I'm so, so excited to chat with you today and, you know, with a few of our friends here. So tell us a little bit more about Putt Shack. Absolutely. For those who know and don't know us, um, Putt Shack is an upscale um, tech-infused mini golf um, concept that appeals to all generations. Uh, we have an amazing premium food and beverage um, offering. Um, our mission is to create lasting memories for people of all generations because our main purpose is to bring everyone into play. So if you haven't been to a Putt Shack, I strongly recommend it. You'll have a lot of fun. Um, in terms of the locations that we do have, if you are looking to um, visit us, um, we have four locations in the UK and currently 14 in the US. So 20 locations by the end of 2024 um, and a pipeline to further expand in the US in 2025. So it's, it's really exciting times for us. I can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. I am in the Denver area and have been to Putt Shack many times. It's really fun. So it's uh, always great when I get to, to see both sides of the coin when I'm working with the customer. So thank you. you had a good experience. Hundred yes. <laughs> percent. Love it. Great food, great drinks, and really fun to play mini golf. <laughs> Definitely. So if you are looking for a fun day or night out, it it caters for all. So absolutely yeah, really great. Yes. Um, quick housekeeping note, by the way, if you have questions as we're chatting, we do have um, you know, the ability for you to pop a question in, in the questions section. There will be some polls along the way, so please participate. And again, thanks to those who have been uh, introducing where they're from. I'm seeing folks from all over the place, so love that. Um, looks like we have some other places you know, across Europe. Maybe we could expand Pet Shack too, Jade. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> Who knows what the future is going to hold, hey? Indeed, indeed. I'll just tell you um, a, a little bit more about Speak Up. So we are indeed an employee experience platform, but our bread and butter is around frontline workforce and, and really reaching those folks who are hard to reach. Um, and our companies that we work with struggle to reach, but we have done it for a long time with a lot of different companies. You can see some of our logos here. At the end of the day, it's really about thinking about the needs of these teams. And as, as you know, those of us communicating sometimes are sitting in front of a, a computer, really putting ourselves in the shoes of our frontline folks. So it's really, um, it's a lot of fun and it's something that Speak Up excels at and really getting relevant content to the people when they need it and where they need it. So happy to be chatting today and really bringing you some value. So we're going to talk through, you know, why Putt Shack decided to move forward with a comms app and ultimately what are the hurdles that that you might face or, or that Putt Shack faced in particular. And then honestly, Putt Shack really nailed the adoption of Putt app. And so we're going to learn from Jade all about what that what that in, entailed. Ultimately, there are tips as well to not just get started. And I know I have, I think, some customers here. Um, how do we keep it going, right? What do you do to, to embed this as part of the business? And we will give you some bonus tips around what you could do in September to help your hires. So 
let's jump in. Um, Jay, tell us if you would, why did you decide to even, you know, pursue an employee comms app? Absolutely. So as a tech infused business, it only felt right to really innovate that the way that we communicate with all of us associates across all the venues. So during 2022 um, via our engagement survey, we learned that communication was really, really lacking. Um, we needed the ability to communicate with all of our teams um, as a group, individually, per department, per venue. Um, and it was also a safeguarding piece from a peer to peer communication um, perspective because we did um, see quite a few challenges um, uh, around the way that we were peer to peer communicating. Um, and the, the purpose of our business is ultimately to bring everyone into play. So this is exactly what the platform put at that we obviously tailored it to put Shack, um, did for us, which is amazing. Awesome. All right. Let's talk about, you know, what are the challenges that, that generally we see around employee app adoption? Um, ultimately, this is a change, you know, putting these, these tools in place, it's, it's, it's operating differently. And so, I, I thought this stat was super interesting because uh, a, a Bloomberg study said that 96% of businesses have had, had challenges with poor digital adoption and that only a third um, rated their uh, ex, you know, experience as excellent. What makes this even more interesting is this is based on desk facing workers. So imagine you know, our workers out um, in a putt shack who are, are helping to assist folks with, with mini golfing and getting their food and their drinks and having a great experience, you know, it's even that much harder to reach those folks. So this is a common theme. And I have to say, people will like to say that employees don't like to change. I actually don't think that's true. I actually think we just don't give them good reasons to change or, or, or we don't do it at the right time, right? So, so employees are okay with changing. It's just that we need to think about, you know, um, why would they do it? Like, what are the reasons uh, ultimately mm -hmm. that, that this, this is something that they should be aware of? You know, what's the, the, the why for them? So it might be, hey, as a company, we wanna communicate with you better. Well, good for you, company. Like, <laughs> talk to me about what I care about. Like, hey, I could actually work more effectively. I can, I can find out my schedule changes more quickly, or whatever the whatever it is. The the point is, what is the why, and really nailing what that is. Um, we also think sometimes about just throwing these changes at folks and and not providing them the information they need to know. Like, what do I do differently? How does my workday need to change, if at all? How does this fit into to what I'm doing? So whether you call it training or onboarding or just awareness, there's that piece of the puzzle that needs to be included. Another one is timing. So sometimes we just say, hey, we have a new thing. Let's, let's, let's get it out there. Well, is it the right time in the business? Is it a busy time of year? Is it uh, that we have too many changes going on at one time. So really thinking about the timing, that's another key thing that, that we've seen. So those are some observations I've seen working uh, with some different customers. But really, Jade, I'd love to hear uh, what those challenges specifically were for Pachek. Absolutely. So I, I would... <laughs> There were a few challenges um, expected, and one of them was the lack of use or the buy-in and the understanding of the communication platform's purpose, because without actually our associates understanding what the whole entire purpose would be for a communications platform, that ultimately wouldn't sit well with them, they wouldn't understand, um, it wouldn't land well, there'd be no usage. So um, we expected some pushback. Um, let, let's be honest, we, we, what we're familiar with becomes the easiest <laughs> thing to use, right? Mm -hmm. um, and WhatsApp's so obviously huge, it's easy, you, it's the way of communication, it's the, the way our society ultimately is, right? So change is hard. Um, and then around concerns around daily engagement and communication due to the, the, the kind of buy-in of the platform launch, um, what we're going to be posting, how it's used. Um, so it was just ultimately the, the buy-in and ensuring that our associates actually knew what the overall purpose and what we wish to share. 
Yeah, I remember when we were were preparing for your launch, you were talking about WhatsApp in particular being a big, you know, yeah. known um, objection that you'd have to face. So let's let's move forward here and look at some of the things that you did you did for that. Um, I would love to now dive into really some of the specific things that you did um, to approach launch, right? So mm -hmm. so diving in, knowing those challenges. Maybe could you tell us a little bit about how you how you handled those? Absolutely. So um, before going into the launch, we obviously had the timelines. We ensured that we were going to go into launch at the right time for the business, like you pointed out just now, uh, because let's, let's be honest, if we were going to launch something like this in a Christmas period, it would not have landed at all, let's be honest, because none of our associates would have the capacities to be able to look and see um, and understand exactly what we're going to do. So we um, there was a lot of visiting the venues, visiting our associates, building up a bit of hype of what's to come. We've, our associates felt heard, obviously, from the engagement um, survey. So every opportunity that we had to talk about what was to come, we literally, that was it. I, I, I could speak about the, the app we're about to launch until I was blue in the face, um, complete ambassador of it, to be honest with you, where, I would walk into venue and they would be very much like, okay, you've come to talk about part up, haven't you? Absolutely, yes, it's coming. Um, we created um, <laughs> we created um, launch posters, which were absolutely plastered all, all over our venues within our um, associate areas. We drove an initiative for associates to enter a prize draw of 500 pounds. Um, and like I said, yeah, absolutely. The visits were absolutely crucial. And I know we're going to get into it in a little while, just around um, kind of how we got a bit more buy-in and obviously activation there. But um, that this was the kind of bread and butter to prepare for the app launch. Yeah. And I think what I hear you saying is you had to become the annoying put app person. I did, <laughs> Really, where they at one point thought I was directly employed by you because yeah. I'm, I would speak about it all the time. But I think it was really important to just get across that how passionate Putchak as a business um, is around communication, how we really wanted to improve um, the, the way that we communicate. So preparation. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I joke, but like, I think. I think that's the thing is the person having to communicate it all day, all the time. You almost do feel like you're becoming this annoying person. But I, I think that you have to remember it's that repetition. It's that reinforcement that people need to keep hearing it to really understand, no, this is really what we're doing now. Like this absolutely. is this is the direction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The launch day came around. Uh, talk Thank to you. us about what that looked like. So launch day came around. Um, the activation links went live. Everyone knew what to expect because obviously we built so much hype around it. We had the posters. Um, we incorporated it into our management meetings, our team meetings. Um, and yeah, the adoption was a complete uplift and success. Um, in terms of the leadership's role in that, a lot of our pre-launch, obviously we, we did training with our leaderships um leadership team um so that they could ultimately be ambassadors within the venues as well to keep that hype going um and re really drive the agenda that we had to bring everyone into play yeah and i think do i recall that we gave the leaders early access so they could get really comfortable yeah. with it start posting yeah yeah absolutely I, I recall that we did the training sessions um with all the leadership team um we gave them a little bit of um time to to log in, test it out, give some feedback, get familiar, um, and answer, um, ask any questions that they had, any feedback of improvements, any the, the bits around the kind of process that we had for um, Pat, Pat, Pat Amp as a as a whole. Um, so they were part of that journey, and I think have, initially having those key stakeholders at the beginning of something so big and so. Um, I suppose life changing in the putt shack world when it comes to communication, that buying was absolutely vital because without that the our key stakeholders buying, it, it wasn't it wasn't gonna land, was it yeah. at the end yeah. of the day? So um that that was really great. And uh, and you had some leaders that do dove in and I believe you had some that were hesitant, you know, they were 
requiring a little bit more help. Um, yes. Can you talk a little bit about what their hesitation was initially, some of those? Yeah, the hesitation was, oh no, another um, platform to manage. <laughs> Something else to think about. But after obviously doing the training, sitting down and re kind of cooping around what the actual purpose is and how it's going to change the way of communication and streamline what that looks like and not have any kind of form of communication lost in translation um for example with kind of team briefings they can obviously post the brief after it they could see what the benefits would be in, in the long term it was just getting their head around exactly what that would look like yeah, and you actually did something I thought was really great, um, which was to create a content calendar that you shared out to give them that food for thought of like, well, here's the types of things that you could post and when and get into a rhythm. Yeah. yeah, so the main challenge and what we expected initially in the early stage was the confidence of what we can and can't post. And although obviously we put a policy together and um, and ultimately the, the content planner was built for all of the venues so they can consistently look at what they can post throughout the month. So they're not oversharing, but they're prioritizing what's shared from a news perspective, for example. Um, it just gave obviously the, our leaders that, that confidence to know that we can post around celebrating success, birthdays, star of the month there, there was all these kind of people initiatives that we were launching at the same time so it became easy to know when and what to to post yeah yeah i think that that made a big difference and again you had some people jump in immediately others took a little bit longer Absolutely. Um, but ultimately you reached 98 percent adoption mm -hmm. rate and jade like just to pause for a minute i still mm -hmm. like get the chills when i think about it because this is something all of my customers want um, yeah. and so that's this is like the burning question you know mm -hmm. how did you get here <laughs> so you've described a lot of the work up until and through launch I'm mm -hmm. just showing here, this is literally, it may not look like a very sexy picture. But it's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is amazing. So this is a true, this is right from, from uh, the PUT app analytics data. So you can see consistently that the PUT app um, uh, activation and so people activating their, their, their account has been so steady. So with any company, you're gonna have um, people coming and going, but it's very clear that as your people are hired on, this is embedded mm -hmm. and this is part of, of what you do. So I think it would be great to dive in a little bit more on you know the what you, what you did uh, to keep this going. To keep it going. So like I touched on earlier, the whole uh, the overall value and the purpose to bring everyone into play um, when it comes to the kind of communication side of things. Um, it was really ensuring that our current associates obviously activated on launch and any new starters, um, it was activated within 24 hours of them starting it was it become the kind of heartbeat of communication um and our way of work so to speak so um it was just providing this is the place to be you need to be on putt up to know what's going on in the business whether it's within your venue to understand what's going on any changes um any new items, just to keep everyone um, informed, so to speak. Um, and then as an ultimate, as a, as a group as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, I think your emphasis on the two sides of the coin is, because we talked about this as a change for current employees, but you really started baking it into the way of, of working so that as yeah. new employees came on, it's just the way, which is so much easier, like when they start to just say, this is how we do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And like I, I touched on when it comes to the kind of policy side of things, we um, re-imaged what our communications policy looks like. And like I touched on earlier around WhatsApp, that was proven professionally very, very challenging. So from the offset for, say, new starters that were coming on board, they knew that WhatsApp wasn't a professional stream that we were using. PuttUp is obviously where we are communicating as a business and peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, so that's where the regular use of, 
obviously communication is and where the obviously the app come into play um and the training the sops everything was kind of built out to ensure that all of our associates were confident and knowledgeable and informed of how how it all worked and where they can navigate whether it's policies or how to post or how to um, engage um, throughout the, the app. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So um, I think we've covered these points pretty well. You really just embedded it into the, the operation of the business. Um, no. like new starters, it, I've obviously put on their new starter induction. So within a new starters 24 hours, of joining the business we want them to activate but for those that maybe are still a little bit like they're not confident they're not too sure what what the platform is we incorporated it within our new starter induction um and we supported them to to get on the app and and do some kind of one-to-one -one training so they were confident and they knew how to navigate the system let me ask you the burning question i have um yes. where else do your leaders communicate this content nowhere that is the, it's, it's the all theory. in one place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the thing that's it's I, I find a lot of, of my customers do struggle with mm -hmm. ensuring that communications, which are traditionally, especially for really large companies, go through email or maybe even an intranet, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you really brought everybody into play within Pet App. And that is, I think, a hundred percent a huge factor of the adoption that you have today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I know we've had some questions coming in. I think what we'll do is keep going and then we do have a Q&A section at the end. So we will be sure to come back and hit these questions. So that's awesome. I love, love yeah, the questions. You. All right. So yeah, just talking a little bit now about ultimately um, uh, sort of reinforcing some of the things we've already talked about. Um, mm -hmm. And I love this. It really was a hole in one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I do want to acknowledge, though, your role here. So mm -hmm. I think that you have a team of folks that you work mm -hmm. with. So mm -hmm. so you were a key ambassador, but I believe you enabled your teams and yes. your leaders to also become ambassadors and to tell yes. their story. And I think that's something that you you can sort of pat yourself on the back for. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's a common challenge, right? Like you have obviously as head of people, you have a lot of responsibilities, a lot going on. So finding ways to sort of spread the responsibility and the, the way to embed this and help, you know, exponentially grow the, the messaging by having other people and enabling them to do that, I think was another key. Absolutely. I think it was a huge priority to have such a, a robust communications platform because ultimately that really helps us launch and land other people initiatives it all comes in combined into one at the end of the day for like the what we're trying to aim to do as a business yeah absolutely all right so let's talk about measuring success i know that's one of the questions that kind of came in here um could you talk us through um you know how you how you tracked success during during the rollout and, and what these metrics kind of meant to you Absolutely. So um, once a month, we pull with our people data and um, obviously we, we look at the data around um, time of activation, time of use, engagement and content um, percentage and activation rate. And by looking at these analytics, we can really understand um, those new starters that are um, activating within 24 hours, which is the the goal um or those that are activating after 72 hours so it's digging a little bit deeper around what that is and that opens up um conversations when i'm meeting with the leadership team to ask the question of, of how are you communicating um the app when that new starter first starts um and what we run by weekly induction so by it could be two weeks later that a new starter could be enrolled into the platform but to me that's too late they've missed out on two weeks so that it, it's kind of opened up conversations around what that looks like so that's the reason why we we are forever tracking time of activation so that we can keep that conversation and the purpose of why activation within the 24 hour time limit is absolutely vital because i do believe and from the analytics that we have that that 
gets buying straight away and understanding of um, the way that we communicate um, as a business. Time of use is good for obviously posting content because we can see which associates are engaging at certain times. So we, we, we run monthly and quarterly reports on all of these areas of analytics. Um, engagement and content, um, I created, um, I run the, obviously uh, the analytics off, I created a scoreboard and have a bit of kind of friendly competition amongst the venues to understand who, who are posting the most content, which venues are engaging the most. And ultimately, if there is a lack of engagement in one of the venues, that's another conversation that obviously I can have with the, the leadership team to understand um, how the cultures go in, the morale in the venue, and understand the reasons to why there isn't as much engagement and content. And when you're doing that on a monthly um, basis and a quarterly basis, it really can open up other conversations of how we can improve and what the opportunities are. Um, so yeah, that, that's the reason why we obviously do all, all the metrics monthly and quarterly. Yeah, I love how you've baked it into your, again, your operating rhythm as you're speaking and then taking that competitive nature of your leaders and, and okay. having a little, you know, creating that FOMO. So, hey, wait, yeah. why are they doing so well over there? What do we need to do? <laughs> and, and then that kind of triggers a, what else can we do to make sure that our analytics are even better next month or next quarter? So it just really, really opens up great and positive um, conversations around yeah. how we can always Im improve and what the opportunities are. Yeah, I did want to clarify because somebody asked activation is what we talk about with the percent of people invited who activate mm -hmm. their account. So that yeah. is indeed that um, you're definitely nailing it. Um, I always say you're never going to get everyone, but boy, you guys are really close. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we've embedded it in the way that the business runs, yeah. um, way of work. So yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, so there's the launch. There was all the prep. Then you're starting to bake it into your metrics and measuring success. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously that's the start. Uh, I always say this is a journey. So we'd mm -hmm. love to dive in and talk a little bit about, you know, what are the things you're doing um, after the launch? Like how, how are we um, sustaining that level of engagement? Absolutely. So around the time that we were preparing the launch and obviously post launch and from an ongoing perspective, we were launching new people initiatives like our associate of the month, associate of the quarter. Um, we were driving, um, celebrating longevity, so employment anniversaries. Um, so shout outs, fun updates. You can see from the screenshot here, um, a load of different people initiatives that we were working on, um, promotions. It was ultimately to really celebrate our associates and really showcase some really fun and positive moments as a business because let's be honest it can become quite chaotic at times there's a lot of work to do um, but there's a lot of fun to be had as well as such a fun concept that we are so why not streamline that in the way that we communicate and showcase that so um, absolutely the, the people initiatives really were aligned with, with our agenda as a communication platform yeah uh, and how do you keep these things relevant to people over time, right? And, and that what's in it for me piece. Absolutely. I think that once you've got the buy-in and you can see exactly what's been shared and you want you want a piece of the cake, so to speak, it is building that, that fear of missing out. Um, and when we are posting like team, team events, we're planning and posting team events, um, that's the only way that you can RSVP to our events is through one stream, not multiple different kind of feedback um, platforms. It's all in one place. So if you're not on PUTAP and you, for example, would like to come to the New Year's party that we threw back in January, which was amazing, um, then you need to be on the platform to RSVP, right? So it, it works hand in hand. Amazing. And I think there's some some additional little tips you can share here how you've how you've really embedded it in operational um, pieces. Yeah. So um, you'll see on that screenshot there's the August Punch Jack newsletter. So that's a combined newsletter from um, operations, people, marketing, all in one place. And the only way you can receive it is through um, Putt App. Um, 
charity fundraisers. We submitted our feedback survey, um, put us in the right direction. That was the only way that you could um, fill out the survey. So we had a load of posters um, created around the venues with a QR code and it would obviously say, right, okay, log into your, your PUTAF account to be able to feedback. And it did drive a lot more engagement and we got great feedback. So it is it is keeping it short and sweet. It's keeping it interesting. We're not overloading too much information at one time, um, but it is the platform that you need to be on to know what's going on and what news is to be read. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so I think we have some some tips for what could what could our guests here do in in particular for their September hires? What are some things that uh, they could do? Absolutely. So setting expectations from the start. Like I said, we had a policy way way of work around. Um, communication um, and being on the platform. So we let all of our new starters know how the app fits into their day to day from day one, where, where they need to, um, where they can uh, um, locate like the groups, the policies, everything is literally in one place. So creating a policy, setting out your business's expectations is absolutely vital. Um, incorporate this with obviously the new starters involved in an induction, absolutely needed. Highlight the importance and the purpose. Um, and like I said, create, create FOMO. Everyone needs to be in there. Did I jump across all of these steps? Yeah, probably, yes, probably. I like these examples. Yeah. It kind of gives you a little bit of yeah. visual. Um, I'll pop back to this first one. I, I remember yeah. when we were first starting, we created these just very brief videos. I think they're like less than a minute yeah. just for anybody who's trying to self-serve. I don't think generally people need to be trained on the app, but but there's little no. things like this you can do to help, right? Um, I found it was really useful because, yeah, absolutely. We went through training. We're, we're introducing the platform in New Starter Induction on New Starter's first day. Um, but being able to go back, um, let, let's be honest, when you're a new starter, there's a lot of information right in all different areas coming at you. So by going back and having a look at the SOPs, looking at the the videos, it, it become really useful for new starters and managers to revert back, especially when we were launching through the first couple of months, leaders, it was great for leaders to go back and just remind themselves the difference between creating an event, the news, posting, it, how it all kind of ties in together. Yeah, absolutely. And I love um, how by, by location, you've really laid out the basics. It's not an overwhelming amount of information. You have your knowledge library, some of your learning, your policies, and then some really specific help. That's all available by search. So I think you've done just a really nice job of not putting too much, but just the right amount of resources out there. Um, and then again, this is just a quick view of your menu where you're delivering on that, you know, one place to get everything you need sort of promise. Um, and I actually think we've even added some things to this menu since then, like links out to your learning tool. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping everything in one place. So LMS is obviously clicked into here, um, a HR system. So yeah, I, you need to be on putt up to be able to get anywhere else. Yes. I will go ahead and ask this uh, question, but um, mm -hmm. do your employees have work phones or are they putting this on their personal devices? They are downloading it on their personal devices. Absolutely. Have you had any pushback on that front? No, none. I remember when we, we did obviously the, the talk last year when we were together and this this question came up then um, and I don't want to jinx it, but we haven't had any pushback on that. I would, I, I would say our associates are enjoying being on, on the platform. They're not only they've been informed of news and events and just everything that ties into our agenda for, for the platform, that they, they want to be on there. And you yeah. can see analytics and activation that I think if there was pushback, we absolutely wouldn't have this activation. Right. Yeah. I think we, we didn't necessarily show very specific examples, but I've observed that you do a lot of celebrating of people and successes and um, promotions and that sort of thing, uh, awards and so forth. And, I think that's that culture piece, right? That makes people feel a part of, of the company and a part of Pudchak. And I think, uh, yeah, kudos to you. All right, so let's um, sort of recap. Uh, we, we've covered a lot, but so uh, we'll, we'll hit on the, 
like three things to avoid and three things totally you should do. Um, so what are the things to avoid? Don't let the fear of failing hold you back. I think anything new and anything that is really a huge launch, this was huge for us. It really innovated the way that we were communicating. Um, everyone has a bit of the fear sometimes, but I think the fear is good because you're out of your comfort comfort zone completely. So don't let that hold, hold you back. Um, don't overwhelm the team by oversharing. Like I said, I created a content calendar that really spread out what what to share throughout the um, throughout the month. Although saying that, when it comes to celebrating successes, so birthdays and promotions and um, star of the month and that kind of thing, um, some of daily posts, to be honest with you, it, my news feed, because obviously I see all venues, is, is like a social media platform where everything's being shared and, and it's really amazing to see. Um, but from a content perspective, from business updates, it's really, really important to stagger that out through the month because if marketing are going to be sharing something about the the marketing side of the business, the people and the, well, the people side of business, we don't want to post on the same day. So we really need to scatter out what that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and don't give everyone the keys to the content kingdom. Absolutely. So identify, obviously, who your leaders are, who's going to be content admins, who's going to be sharing. Um, within our venues, um, we obviously the, the leaders have the power to post, which is great, but we do have um, put up kind of champions that will share certain things from the content calendar as well. And all, all associates, when we post, say, someone's birthday um, or a promotion, all of our associates amongst the whole business can comment and react, which is amazing, but they can't ultimately share the con content. So it's it's um, just limiting what that looks like. Yeah, putting in some guardrails to- Absolutely, I think boundaries are needed, otherwise it could become a little bit chaotic. So yeah. we need to have some kind of control to an element, but then give everyone the power of, of communication. Yeah. So speaking of that fear factor, a common uh, concern I hear is what, you know, what if somebody posts a comment that's super inappropriate? Have yes. you run into that and if it, or, or any kind of issue where you've had to address it? Yeah, um, there, there has been a time where um, someone's written something inappropriate, um, but obviously having the, the correct admins in place, we can obviously delete what that looks like. But to be fair, in the, since launching, that's only happened once. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it, right? Like, this is, again, <laughs> operating from here, right? Turn off comments. Okay, well, you shut down everything for the, like, 1% situation. And yeah. I think, um, of course, whatever that person posted, it was next to their name, right? So exactly. you're now aware of this, maybe an issue with an employee that could be addressed. Mm -hmm. And that person is most likely saying things in real life. Anyway. Absolutely. And they're opening itself up to kind of formal proceedings, let's be honest, as per our, our policy. So I think, like I said earlier, having that um, information, the expectation piece from the offset, it sets the expectation and the, the message is, is that this this platform and the way that we're communicating is is positive. There isn't anything negative on there. So we don't expect anyone to write anything negative on there. So yeah, that one person out of the whole time that we've, we're coming up to what, two years in the new year. So um, yeah, so it's, it's positive. Yeah, and this is common um, when I'm working with new customers. Is we we work through the data and private, you know, data privacy, security questions. How mm -hmm. does it work? And then you do what you've done, which is set the expectations. You know, when people first launch the app, we can have them sign off on policies. You mm -hmm. can make them available right there on the app, like you have, and then follow through. Right? Have Absolutely. Some yeah. amount of monitoring, but again, it's not all on you. You've spread that out with the yeah. the admins across the the areas as far as being able to action and, and take um, any any steps needed for inappropriate activity. So, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's great. All right. So, how how to crush it? What are three things you should definitely do? Absolutely. So, train your managers first. The key is getting everyone on board. Um, bringing them along on the journey because it's a, a massive and um, integral um, piece of 
piece of the agenda around communication that we really want to promote as a business and having our leaders be on that journey from the offset is just so important um so training is absolutely key because then part of your training could be part of your content calendar and it all ties in nicely and then it builds the confidence to be able to use the platform know what to post um and it's just easy there, there onwards which is great um and have a simple communication policy that I've touched on a couple of times throughout, throughout this webinar. Um, it doesn't need to be a 50 page manual, top line expectations on one, um, easy to read, easy to digest and sets out the expectation. Um, and, and do make fun, absolutely. Share the stuff that gets people talking, create the FOMO, create the, it's the place to be, it's the, the place of communication as a business. Um, and it's a positive place to be um, and when you're sharing such positive posts and content and news and events and everything to do with anything positive going on in the business it creates a really nice environment yeah and i want to call out something that's i observe you you've done that's pretty cool i mean when you first launched you were very focused on what you know your location or venue uh, comms and of course we use our, our data sync to automatically make sure people see the right content based on where mm -hmm. they are they can't yeah. leave those groups so we make sure we see they see the content your leave your managers know people are getting the messages but then over time you started to explore new use cases and new opportunities and your positive putter group um, yes. I think is a very cool example. Can you just talk very briefly about what that yeah, is? Absolutely. So yeah, all, all of our groups are built out as as per obviously the venues, the departments, the positions. Um, so Positive Putters was um, launched early this year. It's a closed forum. Um, we share everything positive, motivate. It's a motivational. Um, kind of small little community that we've founded within within the group. Um, we launched by plastering a load of posters all over our venues um, and obviously sharing within the platform of how um, our associates can join. We didn't want to kind of put it in everyone's face and say, you have to join this this group. It's for those that want to be in a, in a place where a lot of positive um, information and really informative and helpful um, information is shared around um, well-being, um, that influence in a healthy well-being, um, healthy mindset. Um, a lot of our associates share um, how they keep fit, recipes, like there's just, it's a whole community of just absolutely health and well-being um, and motivational books that someone might may recommend so it's a really really lovely group and um we had a, a big activation um percentage on that as well which which was great without having to absolutely force feed everyone to yeah. to join so um it's going well we post three times a day morning um lunchtime and afternoon oh. um and yeah, it's it's great to see everyone engaging and, and making recommendations and influencing certain ways of well-being. So it really yeah. landed well. It's just such a great example that you can provide a space for opt-in and it delivers on that promise of like relevant information for you. And part of that is that people get to choose what they want to consume as well. So yeah. big it's kudos good. there. All right. Well, let's, um, I know it's, uh, this has been awesome as always. Love chatting Thank with you. you. Let's see what questions we have not hit on. Um, so here's one that came through. A big challenge we're seeing is from the ambassadors themselves. Okay. Uh, they feel like it's an add-on to their day job. How could you help overcome this pushback? Um, or does it just come down to leadership buy-in? I think it's leadership buy-in. Um, and I think with the ambassadors, if they have that content calendar, they're able to factor it into their working day, the working week, the working month. They know what's to come and they can set out the time. I think it's just prioritizing it as part of part of work. It's not, it shouldn't be anything additional. It shouldn't be a plug into what the day looks like. It should be a way of work. So it is just prioritizing what that looks like and and yeah. having really timelines of when that's gonna go out. Yeah, not 
not looking at it as the one more thing. It's more like moving something here, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's working yeah. to do its communication that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a great a great point. Another question that came through um, is: Do you, did you have any privacy issues featuring birthdays? Our privacy folks and some employees ask us not to use birthday info. Okay, so I think with the birthday side of things, it was um, up to the associates to add that in. Um, we didn't automatically have all that information put in. Um, when we made everyone aware around the birthday feature, it, it, it was optional. Yes, and that's what most of my customers do, right? I do have a few that choose to just preload that, that data um, and actually in that case, the employee could still go, you know, remove it. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a, just a plan around it and an awareness, which is that, that point you made, which is, Hey, yeah. there's this feature. If you want to participate, make sure it's on your profile. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes it easier when we're celebrating birthdays, if it is in one place, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, making it optional for us, I think ensured that we didn't come across that challenge. Yeah. Great. I think we kind of touched on this question. It was, um, it's cool to celebrate successes together, organize prizes, but what about essential professional comms that you need to get across to your workers? Do you decide only to use Speak Up to communicate that content? Um, I know you've mentioned there's things like posters. I imagine there's some amount of other comms in your venues, but yeah, I'll let you kind of address this one. Um, so, everything that we communicate out to the business comes through put up and that that is ultimately it. I mean with obviously the leadership teams obviously we still use work email absolutely but when we're sharing any kind of update any kind of news it, it goes through one stream there's no point in over complicating it and sending a team's message sending an email putting it through a different platform when ultimately this is here for communication so it's streamlined in one place yeah yeah and i notice i've noticed you even use um pod app for hq audience things for example the events feature um yeah. still keeping it in one place but of course naturally like in collaborating communicating you might use email internally for leaders for some yeah. things but yeah yeah absolutely yeah it, it if it, it is sharing um anything it, yes absolutely through the platform yeah awesome all right, I think that was all. Of, I think I hit all the questions. Um, happy to answer any additional if, if anybody wants to come through with uh, more questions, but um, this has been fantastic. Thank you uh, so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions coming. Oh, well, I said that and then one new came. Um, one last one, Jade, let's take one. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned analyzing a lot of data from Compass, that's our analytics tool. Yes. Um, do you strive for a specific percentage of weekly or monthly active usage? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so within the scoreboard that I created, it will note, for example, um, low, moderate, high in, say, posting content. If it's below 10 posts in that month, for example, that could be marked as low. So it's putting um, what you feel is, is appropriate for, for what the month is. Like there's some venues that will post about 52 updates in one month but then there is an, another venue that may only post five. But then we look at the analytics, we see um, what engagement they've got from just five opposed to the 52. Um, and like I said earlier, it then opens up the conversations um, from a broader people perspective around how the morale and how the culture's going there and how we can, uh, what's the op opportunity to really improve what that looks like. So I, I think that's one of the most important things to to analyze every month. Yeah, I love how you pointed that out because we provide metrics, right? So yeah. again, there's a monthly active usage, but I always say it's it depends on your goal and your expectation. Mm -hmm. like what are you expecting it to be, be used for? I have customers who actually use their app for daily operating information. So mm -hmm. the expectation for daily active usage is quite mm -hmm. high. Yeah. Um, I have customers who will share the app primarily for fun culture building recognition. Mm -hmm. 
And they, and to your point, it's a direct correlation to content sharing. Yes. So I think um, it's important at what you're pointing out, which is to know your audience and know what they mm -hmm. actually need and not just judge everybody exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, that it just provides a little window into what's happening in your venues. Um, exactly that. Little, little conversations. <laughs> Absolutely. Great stuff. All right. Well, I will um, I will say thank you again. Uh, Jade, oh, thank for you very me. much. This has been great. It's always great chatting through Pass Up. Like I said, um, I can speak about this to I'm blue in the face. Yeah. So, um, no, thank you so much. It's been yeah. great. And thank you to everyone who's obviously joined today's webinar. And I hope that you found it really useful. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thanks. Thanks, everybody. And Jade, uh, Kudos to you. Kudos to Pet Check for this investment that you make in your employees. It really shines through and um, yeah, it's a pleasure working with you. So. Oh, it's a pleasure working with you and the team as well. The, just touching back on obviously the pre-launch and the support that we've had throughout since obviously joining the Speak Up family. Um, yeah, you, you've all been great and you've all always been very supportive. And we have obviously our catch up calls every month. And we talk about the opportunities and obviously how our analytics are. So thank you so much for all the support, because obviously without you guys, this wouldn't have landed the way that we did. So thank you. It's been a great partnership. All right. Absolutely. Have a great evening. Have a great thank day, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.